Welcome back everyone. Before the break, I revised the definitions of surface area and volume. In this part of the lesson, we're going to dive into some more examples that can help us have better ways of solving measurement problems. Let's have a look at the concept map. So guys, we're going to look at how measurement assists us in problem solving with shapes. We're also going to look at strategies for measurement problem solving and we're also going to see that there are some links between trig and measurement questions. So we are first going to have a look at this question. So the diagram shows a water tank which is made up of a cylinder and a cone having equal radii. So when it says equal radii, that just means that the cylinder has a radius of 0,5 meters and the cone has a radius of 0,5 meters. The angle between the perpendicular height AB and the slant height AC of the conical section is 35,5 degrees. So that is this top angle that is labeled over here. We know that this angle is 35,5 degrees. The first thing that we are going to be working with is calculating the perpendicular height of the cone. So traditionally, when I see the words perpendicular height, I often end up thinking, OK, well, this means that I'm probably going to be using Pythagoras because we know Pythagoras is a common way to find the side of a right angle triangle. But in this particular example, I see that I only have my angle and a side. But I'm hoping that we can draw on previous knowledge. And this is one of the examples where different sections of maths intersect each other. It is fairly common, if you look at certain past papers, that trigonometry sneaks its way into measurement, especially with regards to a right angle triangle, because I know that I can use my trig ratios to find missing sides. So always just a reminder, when I am using trig ratios, I have to label my sides relative to the angle that's given. So I can see that the opposite side is 0, 0,5, the adjacent side is AB, and my hypotenuse is AC. I want to find AB. So I'm looking for my adjacent, and I have my opposite. So if I think about my trig ratio, so a lot of people say Sokotoa to remember it. Different people remember it in different ways. You could do whatever your teacher has taught you. But the trig ratio that involves the opposite and the adjacent is tan. So tan 35,5 degrees will be equal to my opposite, which is 0, 0,5, over my adjacent, which is AB. But I want to isolate AB. So in order to isolate AB, I'm going to multiply both sides by AB. So I'm going to have AB tan 35,5 degrees is equal to 0, 0,5. But to get AB by itself, I have to divide both sides by tan 35,5. So AB will be equal to 0, 0,5 over tan 35,5 degrees. Now I'm going to use my calculator to actually work this out. So I've got 0, 0,5 over, sorry that we can see we've got a bracket missing over there, 0, 0,5 over tan 35,5 degrees, which is going to give me 0, 0,7. We can see later on there's a 9 involved, but because I'm rounding to the second decimal place, I'm going to say that my perpendicular height is 0, 0,7 meters. So we know this is 0, 0,7. Great, guys, let's go on to the next question. So, when the tank is full, an electricity pump switches on and pumps the water from all of the tanks into an irrigation system at a rate of 0, 0,52 meters cubed per hour. The pump automatically switches off the tank when it is a quarter full. We are going to be calculating how long in hours the pump feeds water into the irrigation system. So guys, we're going to be working with the volume of the tank. So before we can actually dive into the irrigation system, I'm going to actually have to know my volume. Let's go back to the board. 
So the height of the tank itself is 1,8 meters, but I calculated the length of my perpendicular height. So I know that my perpendicular height is 0, 0,7, but because my perpendicular height is 0, 0,7, that means that the height of the cylinder would have to be 1,1 meters, because we know that from this point going up, there's a height gain of 0, 0,7. So we know that the radius is 0, 0,5. We've got that angle. We also know the rate of pumping until it's a quarter full. So we need to calculate the time in hours, but I'm first going to have to calculate the volume of my cone before I can move on. The volume of a cone is normally said to be a third times pi times r squared multiplied by the perpendicular height. But I can actually work this out by filling in what I know. So it's going to be a third times pi times my radius squared, which is 0, 0,5 squared, multiplied by my height, which I found earlier is 0, 0,7. So I can now plug this all into my calculator. So it's going to be a third multiplied by pi multiplied by 0, 0,5 squared multiplied by 0, 0,7. And this is going to give me an answer of 0, 0,18. So the volume of the cone is 0, sorry, this is going to be a cubed because it's a volume, 0, 0,18 meters cubed. Great, so now let's move on to the next calculation, and that is going to be the volume of my cylinder. I know what my volume of my cone is, but now it's time to do the cylinder. And the volume of a cylinder is pi times r squared multiplied by my height. But I discussed on the previous slide that we know that the height of my cylinder is now 1,1 meters because I know that the height of the, of the cone on top is 0, 0,7. So the height of my cylinder is 1,1. So it's going to be pi times my radius squared. I know my radius is 0, 0,5. Multiply by my height, which is 1, 1. So sorry, I forgot the squared in there. So it's pi r squared multiplied by my height. So let's fill it into my calculator. So it's a pi multiplied by 0, 0,5 squared multiplied by my height, which is 1, 1 which is going to give me an answer of 0, 0,86. So the volume of my cylinder is 0, 0,86 meters cubed. And my answer is cubed because it is a capacity, it is a volume, so my units have to be cubed. So now at this point, we have the volume of my cone and we have the volume of my cylinder. So we know that the rate of my pumping is 0, 0,52 meters cubed per hour until it is a quarter full. So we want to know that we've worked out the volume of the cone and the volume of the cylinder. So the total volume of the tank would be 0, 0,18, the volume of the cone, plus the volume of the cylinder, which is 0, 0,86. So the total volume of the tank is 1,04 meters cubed. But we want to know how much of the volume that is going to be empty because we want to know the rate of pumping until it is a quarter full. So we want to know the time in hours until three quarters of it hasn't been reached yet. So it's going to be three quarters multiplied by 1,04. So we're going to have th three quarters multiplied by one comma zero four, which is going to give me zero comma seven eight. And I want to know the time and hours that this takes. So I'm going to have to divide this by the rate of pumping. So we know that the volume of the water pumped is 0, 0,78 meters cubed, and I'm going to have to divide that by the rate of pumping. So it's going to be 0, 0,78 meters cubed 
divided by the pump of rating. So let's pop that all into my calculator. So it's going to be 0, 0,78 divided by 0, 0,52, which is going to give me an answer of one and a half hours. Great, everyone. I hope that you're still with me. We're going to go on to another example. Cool. So the diagram represents the design that a chocolate factory wishes to use. So the diameter of the cone is 40 millimeters and its height is 50 millimeters. So that is this particular cone in this diagram. The first cylinder has a radius of 35 millimeters. The second cylinder has a radius of 25 millimeters and the height of the cylinder is 10 millimeters. We want to determine the total volume of chocolate that is required for each chocolate model. So guys, we just need to picture this. We've got a cone and we want to fill this entire cone with chocolate. We then have two cylinders that are sitting inside each other. However, I'm filling chocolate in this circular mold. So we've got the larger cylinder on the outside, which is cylinder one, and then I've got the smaller cylinder on the inside, which is cylinder two. So I'm filling chocolate in between the two cylinders. So I'm not counting this middle space. So you can almost see that it's just a circular ring of chocolate that's going to be made. But if I'm gonna determine the total volume of chocolate needed for all of the models, I'm gonna to have to break this example up into different pieces. Great guys, so I know I've got certain molds that I need to fill with chocolate. I'm going to be filling the cone with chocolate so I'm gonna first have to actually work out the volume of that cone. Then the next calculation is it's slightly more intricate because I have a cylinder within a cylinder. I need to work out the volume of the larger cylinder on the outside, and I'm going to have to subtract the volume of the smaller cylinder on the inside because the difference between those two will leave me with that ring of chocolate that will be in the volume of the difference between the bigger and the smaller cylinder. So we've got a few volume calculations to do. Also, please note that this question has asked us to leave our answers in terms of pi. So I'm not gonna stress about decimals. For this particular example, I'm gonna leave my answers in terms of pi. Let's go back to the board. So first things first, we are going to calculate the volume of the cone, and the volume of the cone is going to be a third times pi r squared times the height. So it's going to be a third times pi times my radius. So please note I've been given the diameter of the cone. That means that my radius will be half of this. So my radius will be 20 millimeters. So it's gonna be a third pi times 20 squared multiplied by my height, which is 50. So let's plug this all into our calculator, friend. So it's going to be a third multiplied by pi multiplied by 20 squared multiplied by 50, which we know we're leaving our answer in terms of pi. So it's 20,000 over three pi. and that is the volume of the cone. Now we're gonna look at the volume of the chocolate that's going to be between the two cylinders. So the volume of cylinder one. So cylinder one is this larger cylinder on the outside, and I'm going to find the volume of that cylinder by substituting into pi r squared h. So it's gonna be pi times my radius, which is 35 squared, and I've been told that the height of the cylinder is 10. So this is cylinder one, so I'm now gonna plug this all into my calculator. So it's pi r squared, which is 35 squared, multiplied by my height of 10, which is gonna give me 12,250 pi. Cool, so that is the volume of cylinder one. Now I need the volume of cylinder two. So the volume of cylinder two is going to be dependent on the radius of 25 millimeters. So it's the same 
formula, except now we know we've got a smaller radius of 25. I'm going to plug this all into my calculator again. So it's pi times my radius squared multiplied by 10, which is going to give me 6,250 pi. Now to put this all together, we have the total volume of the chocolate required. So we first got the volume of our cone, which we got to be 20,000 over 3 pi. Then I'm going to have to figure out the chocolate that's going to be filled in between these two cylinders. And that is going to be the volume of the larger cylinder, cylinder 1, and I'm going to subtract the volume of the smaller cylinder, which is cylinder 2. Now I just need to plug this all into my calculator to see the volume of chocolate that will be required. So I'm going to have 20,000 over 3 pi, and this is going to be added to 12,250 pi minus 6,250 pi, which is going to give me 38,000 over 3 pi. And I know that all of my dimensions were in terms of millimeters cubed. Thank you so much everyone for joining me for today's lesson on measurements. I hope that it's helped and I hope that you have a wonderful day further. Goodbye.